All right, guys, uh, Jeff here, just going to give you the lowdown on quite possibly the simplest uh, do-it-yourself uh, solar generator that I've built. And I kind of wanted to go through each one of those components with you really fast because uh, in the past, I've kind of overcomplicated this. So I feel like I've done a good job of simplifying this as to really down to the essential components of what you would need. And I'll get into the... Um, actual generator itself in just a second, but I wanted to talk about panels uh, for just a second. You can see my light is giving you a really good uh, reflection on that panel, but I started with this uh, suitcase style foldable or energy. This is a 200 watt uh, panel. I really, really have liked this. This is, the, I have a couple of these and I really have liked this one. Um, I'm going to show you why. Uh, this is a great setup because a it's portable um, It actually protects itself when it is not being used so it folds uh, right here in the middle and It has these uh, legs that telescope up or down to give you a better angle of the uh, You know so you're able to face the Sun better and then it uh, folds right in here. It has a great carrying handle here uh, this guy and then some latches to lock it in tight um, but what's really nice about this one is that it uh, does just a great job and is super efficient at producing electricity um, this is the carrying case that it comes with and that even adds an extra layer so it folds up on itself um, let's see if you can kind of see that but yeah when you start to bend it it just goes and folds up so it's going to provide that layer of protection. But there's a couple things I wanted to talk about, uh, about the solar panels. One, um, quite frequently when you're, when you're talking about panels, you, you hear people, you know, say, oh, I, I got such and such panel, I got this brand, and boy, it says it'll do 200 watts, well, mine's barely doing 100, this must be a piece of junk. Well, the reality is, is that people don't understand that you need to pay close attention to where you live. There are all kinds of calculators and all kinds of uh, you know, places where you can go to help you understand what that sun intensity is going to do. Now, here in Arizona, uh, I have no problem getting what the factory specs say it's going to produce because I'm in a zone that shows it's going to uh, be super efficient at uh, creating and harnessing that power of that sun. So that's the first thing, is to make sure when you're buying a panel, uh, you're buying it based off of the need that you have. Look at the zone that you're in and then see, you, you might need to go with two panels. You might need to go with a bigger panel or a more powerful panel to give you that wattage that you need. And so pay close attention to where you are. That's gonna save some headache. Now, the second thing is, you can see I've had this panel out. And let's see if I can turn it, yeah. Once I get the light out, you can see how dirty that panel is. The last time I had this out, it actually got rained on in a kind of a dust storm fashion um, out in Arizona. And believe it or not, that little bit of film that is on top of that panel right now will, will erode some of that efficacy. So you do need to make sure you have, even with you, something that can help you clean, uh, clean your panels and keep them clean and so they're able to perform at their optimum uh, level. Now, uh, I'm gonna turn this around so we can see another reason why I like this for energy setup, especially for what you know I'm purporting this one to be, which is a very good um, beginner starter kind of setup if you wanna build your own little generator. And it took a little bit for me to get that turned around, but there we are, okay. So now the first thing is, is that this, this uh, panel actually comes with a uh, charge controller already attached to it. This is the Voyager series and this is a PWM style and it will easily handle this 200 watts of panel that you have here attached to it. And it's already attached. The, you know, the coolest thing about this is, beside the fact that my German short hair cannot get enough of it, Okay, lucky, back up, sweetie. Um, 
So the coolest thing about this is, is just the thought that went into this. They actually mounted this by rivets, which I use a lot of rivets myself, but they mounted it on a uh, hinge rivet. So when it is deployed, like in this case, let's go ahead, oh, well, I got a leg that's kind of not in the position it needs to be in. But when, you, you know, so let's say you get out in the field and you have it set up like this, you know, in order to read it, instead of having to stoop way down low, you can simply, you can simply uh, work that towards your face. So you can see that's, that's just, you know, it's just well thought out. And I always applaud engineers and product designers when they think of things, because they very easily could have mounted this, you know, in a static, in a rigid form, just right there, just mounted it just like that. But what a, what a really good thought out process. So you're able to check the efficiency, what's going on with your panel and with your battery. You're able to check that out uh, simply by um, rotating that up on that hinge. So I really, really like and appreciate that. Again, props to uh, product designers who make things that are intuitively smart and uh, that's, that's one of them. So um, you can see from that that this, this panel and I really like the way that that works uh, like that. Now, I've added a length of uh, about 15 feet of this uh, solar cable to this so that I'm able to deploy these panels out in, away from the tent or RV, uh, and I can keep my generator under cover or inside out of the elements. Uh, so I added a little bit of length to that. It comes with one that you could obviously just plug straight in to do that and I don't know if you're as big as a, a fan as I am of these gear ties I absolutely love these things I use gear ties all the time uh, to help secure things and keep them wrapped up and neat and out of the way so anyway that's really enough about the panel um, I'm gonna go on now to the simple part of this this is the part that I built so the Renergy 200 watt system with that uh, charge control that comes that's something just a pre pre uh, package and it does a great job at producing okay lucky all right that does a great job of providing the electricity that you need to uh, power up the battery and stuff that you have in here so i'm going to start on the outside here i've used this nice case this is a harbor freight case uh, you'll recognize it as that it has wheels it has a telescoping handle um, it allows you to move things around super easy. And what I've mounted on the outside, and I haven't taken this off yet, um, is I've mounted this uh, Renergy uh, battery monitor on the outside. Uh, so at all times I can see what's going on on the inside and uh, without even opening up the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up now. So that's one of the components. Now, this is not necessary. You do not have to have this. Uh, but in my mind, it makes running a solar generator so much better because you now have the ability to see just at a moment what it is you have stored up in your battery. Now, when I turn on just my inverter, as you can see, that puts a draw on it. Uh, it may not be a lot. It's less than an amp and it's less than 10, you know, 12 watts, but that is something. Uh, what this monitor is going to show you is how full that battery is. I'm showing 100% capacity, 99 plus uh, amp hours, and at current draw, it's going to run for almost 92 hours, which is super, super cool that this uh, gives you that kind of feedback. Uh, so you, you simply have to watch what you're using. So that's a component. Again, this one isn't necessary. But I believe it's a, it's a very good thing to have uh, for uh, just your peace of mind so you know what you have stored up in here. Now, for simplicity's sake, I went with a Renergy 2000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. Um, I find these to be very reliable and it comes with a remote control which you can simply and I left the tail on this super long, so you can actually put this anywhere near you, by your tent, wherever you want to be, uh, whatever you want to power on. And as you can see, I've got it turned to the remote setting now, so if I wanted just to turn this off, all I do is that. Now my uh, 
Now my inverter's off. You can see that reflected on the battery monitor. I'm showing zero draw and an infinite amount of power in that. But then by just a quick click of the button, gives you that audible tone, lets you know everything's okay, and that green light that's letting you know it's all on. So that is a, a simple but super nice feature. This 2000 watt Renergy inverter is going to provide enough power to generate most everything that you're gonna run at a campsite. The only thing that you may have trouble with, and that's depending on your air conditioning, if you have a, uh, depending on the type of cooler you have, um, it would run an evaporative style cooler easily. Um, so you've got that, uh, but, uh, and it would even run a, a low wattage microwave oven. It would run a coffee pot, coffee brewer, and things like that. The, the battery monitor is gonna help tell you how long you can do those things, but you can do that. So I've got this 2000 watt inverter. Again, this is nothing I built. It's just something I've plugged and played and I put it inside of here. Now, if I can do this one handed, I'm gonna try to do that. I've got this, uh, I've got this mounted in here, just really by gravity. And let me set this down for just a second. So I can use both hands there. Okay. Well, you don't like to hear those kind of sounds when you're dealing with electronics, but there we are nonetheless, so it is durable. So inside of here, I went ahead and took a lifetime. Uh, this is a 12 volt. Uh, it is a 100 amp hour uh, lithium PL4 battery. And the cool thing about lithiums, if you didn't already know, is it does not matter the orientation. You can literally run these upside down if it makes sense and I have this one on its side uh, because that decreases the height or the profile inside of here and allows me to you know go ahead and put things in my box uh, to store extra cables extension cords things like that that I want to keep uh, in there so really if you wanted to break this down to the required elements for a solar generator you would need a panel with the charge controller, that's your energy setup right there. You need a battery to store the electricity, which is that right there, the lifetime 12, uh, this is a 100 amp hour. And then you need to convert that 12 volt energy into usable electricity uh, for most devices. And that's going to be turn it into 110 power, that's your energy 2000 watt sine wave uh, inverter. So really those are the three components that are required and super simple to do. So again, make your list, a panel with a charge controller, a battery to store it, and a inverter to convert it. So there's the powerhouse to harness the power, the battery to store it, and the inverter to convert it to usable power. So the extra stuff in here would be the battery, uh, uh, monitor the remote control kind of thing for your inverter um, you can see that this battery monitor uses a shunt uh, shunt style it, it basically comes off the negative terminal and that's how you're going to measure your power consumption so there's a shunt there um, you might be able to see that I, I made my own little bus bar out of a piece of flat cop copper bar copper stock and uh, did that so Anyway, the, that, that's really it. Uh, so again, a very simple, simple, straightforward thing. Get a panel with a charge controller, get a battery, and get an inverter. And you can do that. And so again, this is the simplest, simplest route and quickest route to solar generator that I can think of. Um, let me go over some things that you could do to uh, trick it out. You know, if you wanted to, you could put, uh, you know, um, a couple of fuse uh, bars in there if you wanted to isolate what's possibly going to give you grief. Uh, you could put a fuse bar, a bus bar for both positive and negative in there. You could put an on off switch, a kill switch uh, to kill everything so you're not going to drain the battery um, when you wanted to, to do that. You could put auxiliary outlets. Since it is a 12 volt battery, you could put a cigarette adapter on there. You could put USB ports on there. I didn't, I don't, didn't do any of that because this, uh, this guy has that. So we have USB ports and we have additional outlets and, and things like that in there. So anyway, but by and large, uh, this is going to be probably your quickest, simplest, easiest way to get into the uh, solar generator game. So 
uh, go ahead and do me a favor, uh, subscribe to this channel. I do a lot of these kind of builds, a lot of things camping wise, off the grid kind of stuff. And you'll, you'll see how I can put together and do a little more complicated and higher power, uh, including my favorite, which I have a uh, cargo box that I put inside the bed of my truck underneath my camper shell. And it's a 3000 uh, watt uh, cargo box that allows me to work off site. I'm able to use things like skill saws and uh, circular saws and all that uh, off site when I don't even have power, charge up my cordless batteries, uh, and then I can recharge that with the solar panel that I mounted on top of my uh, camper shell. So anyway, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You're going to love the content. And feel free to share or, or hit me up with any questions that you may have.